Hello everybody. Hope you are all doing well and are all uh, safe. Uh, this video we will continue from the last video. We will continue the title two. We were uh, doing last uh, video in which we saw about the CFRS employment agreement. Okay, so this video we will continue and we will talk about wages. What MLC says about uh, uh, wages, rest hours, and we will continue from there. Okay, and uh, thank you so much for uh, viewing this video. And uh, if you like it, please do uh, share this video as much as possible uh, so that you know others also can get the knowledge what you are getting. Thank you so much. Let's go into the video. Hello everyone, let's continue the video. In this, as I mentioned, we will be covering the next section or uh, subtitle you can say of the second uh, title uh, which is condition of employment. First, uh, first title what we saw is eligibility for employment, second is the condition of employment. Okay, let's go into the video. Conditions of employment this is the main title. This is a subtitle 2.2. 2.1 we have seen that is the CFRS employment agreement. Okay, wages. Basically, salary uh, wages is basically uh, the salary what you are going to get uh, uh, paid monthly. There are uh, offshore vessels mostly where uh, the salary is mentioned in the contract uh, per day. You know, it does not uh, mention the per month contract. It, it is per day contract. So. They give a lump sum of uh, so many US dollars, so many Indian rupees per day or any other uh, currency which they can use. Okay. So here uh, what MLC says is that salary should be paid monthly. That means the maximum uh, duration interval can be monthly. That is, that is, uh, it is not about the what is mentioned in the um, contract. But the payment, actually the remittance, what they do, you know, that should be maximum interval should be monthly. That means it can be uh, weekly, it can be bi-monthly, fortnightly or it should be monthly. It cannot be that I can write in a contract and give you, I will pay you salary once in two months. Okay, that is not acceptable as per MLC. Okay, so this is also very important where what you have to see uh, the contract, you know, when what I was talking yesterday, uh, that uh, you know, the uh, contract uh, duration, some contracts mentioned that you know, the frequency of payment is more than a month. So, in that case, you should be very, very careful of joining that company or that ship. Okay, if they are not able to pay your salary regularly, then uh, it could be uh, challenging of. Uh, you know, these are all starting signs of abandonment. Okay, so you should be very, very careful joining a ship where you are not getting salary uh, on a monthly basis. That is remittance. Remittance uh, on a monthly basis you are not getting, then it is a little challenging area. Okay, so you should be very, very careful. Uh, as per MLC, you should be paid monthly maximum duration. Overtime, uh, as we saw uh, in the last video, overtime again. What is mentioned? Uh, what time uh, rate we are talking about? Uh, anybody knows how, how the overtime rate is calculated? What is the basis? How they come to the figure of overtime? Overtime is uh, basically overtime rate is basically calculated 1.25 times as per MLC again as per 1.25 times the basic wages of the rank. Okay, if your uh, basic wage is uh, 100 rupees per hour, that is very, very important. If your salary is 100 rupees per hour, the minimum rate, overtime rate should be 125 rupees per hour. Okay, so how do they calculate? How do you get your, uh, how can you calculate your uh, OT rate, whether it is correct or not correct as per MLC? You have to take your basic wages, that will be for month. Okay, divide by 44 44 hours is the working hours per week. Okay, how do we get this 44 hours per week? Monday to Friday, you work 8 hours. Okay, so that is 40 hours. 8 fives are 40. Then Saturday is half day. Okay, Saturday is half day, then that means 4 hours you are working. Okay, that is your normal working hours. And Sunday is a holiday. 
So that's how the calculation comes. 44 hours per week is the working week. <coughs> okay. So into four. Okay. Uh, that that will that's the standard where uh, they assume that there are four weeks in a month. Okay. So that is 44 into four. That is 176. So you have to divide your basic by this 176. Okay. You cannot divide by the whole month number of hours. You know. So how much hour is the working hour that you have to divide? So once you divide this. Then you will get uh, the uh, your basic per hour rate. Okay, multiply that by 1.25. So what will be the figure you will get? That will be the basic hour over rate you should be having for your overtime. If it is more than that, very good. Okay, some of the uh, CBAs uh, cater for 1.5 hours also. Okay, 1.5 times also. So, uh, if it is one more than 1.25, well and good. If it is less than 1.25, they are not compliant to the MLC convention for the overtime rate. Okay, so uh, this agreed rate should be paid actually, and uh, you you can calculate. You can have a record of your own. You know whether the overtime is uh, calculated properly, how many hours you have actually kept, what is the working hours, all those things. You know. And also the overtime should be overtime rate also should be calculated properly. It is not that they are giving okay, they are giving 100 hours, 200 hours, but the OT rate is very, very less. It should not happen. Okay. So that is that uh, regarding the overtime and the overtime rate. Third is company should facilitate and have an option to send your salary home. Okay. It is possible in olden days, you know, it was a big uh, challenge for sending home from uh, outside countries. Uh, in Indian companies, mostly where I was uh, sailing, so we had to take the cash uh, on board and then find out a bank or a transfer, then go to that uh, uh, agency or the uh, Western Union or something, you know, go there and transfer uh, back the money home. So that was, uh, you know, a little painful. Uh, every time you had to, uh, you, you were, you were, you know, wasting your precious surely on sending money home. So it should not be that way and uh, company should have an option where you can directly send home. You can just tell okay, I want allotment which is called the allotment. Okay. Um, so you have to just sell, tell the company that I want to send so much money home and they should be able to uh, send it across. And the most important thing is they should not charge you for it. Okay. Some companies have you will have one uh, remittance free, other remittance we will charge you or something like that. Okay, per month, per month they will just uh, remit one salary uh, free of charge. But uh, the next uh, remittance, if you want, they will charge you. So there, there, there are some companies who have that rule also. Okay, so basically they should be able to uh, assist you in sending home, sending the salary home, and uh, uh, you they should not uh, charge you for it. That is the most important. Okay, and also with uh, regards to the salary, it is it is your decision. It is your salary. You can decide what you need to do. Uh, you can take it full on cash. You can tell I don't want uh, this month. You can give it to me next month. And uh, once you once they, the salary is paid to you, then uh, they cannot ask you what are you going to do with it. You know, uh, that is completely your earned salary, and it is your decision how you want to spend it. Okay, like like you know, uh, there are some uh, countries like Philippines where there is a certain amount of uh, salary you need to send home. You cannot take the full uh, cash or full salary on board. You know, there should be some mandatory remittance. You know, to the uh, account which you are given while signing on. So that is also there in some of the countries. So uh, that is what it is. So company should be able to facilitate your uh, salary uh, to be sent home okay so that was about the uh, wages now we will go to the next topic uh, that is this next sub title you can tell which is the uh, work and rest hours okay so how is it uh, the work and rest hours it is calculated I, I just gave you a glimpse you know okay, what are the actual working hours <coughs> on a ship so basically you can work for a maximum of uh, 14 hours in any 24 hours that is equal to you can have a break of 10 hours you should have minimum 10 hours of break in uh, any 24 hours period. okay 
and out of this 10 hours break one break should be minimum of 6 hours it is not that uh, uh, they can have uh, uh, you know the 3 hours break they, they have and, and one is 4 hours the other 2 or 3 3 hours which is not acceptable okay you should have minimum 6 hours uh, one break and the other can be of 4 hours totally 10 hours break should be there this is as per the uh, STCW convention also and this is as per the MLC before the MLC the rest hours for the watch keepers were first introduced in STCW before that there was a convention uh, which is called the ILO convention number 180 that was the first convention which actually talked to something about the rest hours you know so that was the convention which was talking about rest hours then came the STCW convention then the MLC MLC is somewhat a mix of STCW and ILO 180 okay so this is what it is so if you have then you should have you must have at least 77 hours rest in any 7 day period so you may ask if it is 10 hours in one day then it should be 70 hours in uh, 7 days so why is it 77 yes 70 hours is as per the STCW convention for the watch keepers 77 hours is as per the ILO convention, ILO uh, convention number 180. Okay, from there they have picked it up. Okay, so that they have maintained, they have not reduced it to 70, they have kept it at 77. So that is what it is. So ideally, if you see, you know, you can have 10 hours and you should have 7, 77 uh, hours in any 7 day period. So ideally, you can take it as 11 hours rest in any 24 hours. That, that should be the calculation which should actually uh, work out, you know. So and uh, uh, it is possible that you know in, in shipping it is it is very difficult to maintain this uh, so they have given also a leeway that you know two days you can have less so you should have compensation all those things are there so you have a very good uh, nowadays everything is automized earlier we were all doing manually uh, doing this and it was becoming here uh, see it is you must have at least 10 hours of rest in any 24 hour period Okay, it is. It doesn't sell that oh, one day starts at 00, 0 and ends at 24 and, and you calculate the rest hours in between. No, it is not like that. A, 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 any 24, you can take uh, night 10 more, uh, night 10 o'clock to morning 10 o'clock, next day morning 10 o'clock. Or you can take afternoon 2 o'clock to next day uh, afternoon 2 o'clock. So it, it can be any 24 hours. In that you should have 10 hours. So it was, uh, you know, manually it was very difficult to have this, you know, uh, the, it was a... Uh, uh, nightmare for the masters where uh, if some of the auditors come and check uh, show me your rest hours which are maintained in uh, manual sheets it becomes very very challenging nowadays uh, it has uh, all the i think i think most of the uh, companies have switched over to the software version so they it, it gives you it, it covers all the regulations it, it checks as per the regulation you are supposed to uh, break the, uh, the the whole 24 hours broken into uh, half an hour slots okay so again, there are some requirements where the rest of us less than that, the 60 minutes break cannot be taken as a break. No, all those things are <coughs> there like, like that is for the Indian flag requirement. Uh, so and and other other flag, they have 30 minute slots. Uh, so we come, the, the seafarer is required to fill up their own rest hours okay it, it is not that somebody uh, in earlier days the cadet or the TME used to fill up the rest hours for the whole team. Okay, nowadays it is very very important that the employee, the seafarer himself fills up the rest of us. Okay, uh, it, is, it is a very very important and it is also helping you in you know, actually knowing your number of hours of work, uh, what is the overtime, everything falls into place automatically. You know, so and, and also the most important thing out of which is, is compliance is one, one side of it, you know, you are getting rested properly. Because unrested crew uh, with uh, mind not very clear is bound for accident. So this this rest of us is very very important hours of work and hours of rest. And they have two combinations. You no know, hours of work and hours of rest. I have shown you hours of rest. That is also similarly other side hours of work. <coughs> okay. So that is also mentioned. So both are mentioned in MLC and mostly. All the companies follow the hours of rest, so it is easy to track and easy to maintain. So they take the hours of uh, rest uh, route. Okay, so this covers the hours of uh, work and rest. Uh, uh, I think uh, I have also uh, 
taken some time in this uh, screen so i think let's let's stop here uh, let's let's take small bit by bit you know so that we are very clear on what we are talking about and we are understanding next i will give you uh, what we are going to talk about uh, entitlement of leave is what we are going to talk about in the next video is basically how much leave you should have all those things you know uh, there is some minimum amount of leave uh, which should have for your contract etc okay thank you so much for uh, watching this video uh, i'm sure you have gained uh, something from this video we have talked about uh, the overtime the overtime rate how it is calculated we have seen about uh, rest hours we have seen uh, how the rest hour is uh, calculated uh, what is the formula being used how much rest you should have and how many pieces of rest you should have we have covered all these uh, points in this video uh please do share this with uh, all your friends and colleagues in office staff or the seafarers who you feel this might uh, help uh, i'll see you in the next video thank you so much have a nice day take care be safe follow camp